Shalom. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Ruel. Peace and salutations to the brethren who feel like pushing this word in the truth and sincerity. Uh, this video here is going to be the faith of Daniel. So I was just thinking about the, the times that we're coming into, uh, you know, the times that are upon us. And uh, we, we're in a time where we need to strive for the masteries, you know, uh, get into these scriptures and help boost our faith, you know, stay, you know, stay pray. What if you have to do? You got to pray, you know, fast, whatever you need to do to get closer to your how about him, how shy, okay? And so I thought about uh, Daniel in the lion's den and just his, his particular faith that he had in there. So I just want to kind of read, go through the scriptures on that and kind of get on that. So hopefully this is a little faith booster. So uh, check it out. Uh, this is Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. It says, <clears throat> Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. So <laughs> they they seeking a way to just blame, just place a blame on him for any something. Okay? Because they literally didn't like him. Because he, no matter what, Daniel was faithful to Yahweh Shem Shah. He served the Lord no matter what. Okay? No matter what the king at the time was saying, whatever the king was doing, he was going to serve the Lord. The Lord okay? All right. <clears throat> this is verse 5. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him, concerning the law of his power. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom and governors, so like the governors and the princes, the counselors, the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any power or man for 30 days, save thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Alright? So, they literally... Uh, came together to make this decree because they knew that Daniel was not going to go for that. No matter what, he was going to serve Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. Uh, verse 8. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, meaning he was facing the homeland. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed, and gave thanks before, before his power, and as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his power. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any power or man within thirty days, save, thee, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alter not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. So <laughs> he like, oh, he ain't, he ain't thinking about you. He praying to his God three times a day, not once, not twice, but three times. <laughs> they, they, I, I can tell you that. I bet you they were laying it on thick too. Then the king. When he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree nor statute 
which the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy power, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. So he couldn't even eat. He couldn't sleep. He didn't even want to be entertained with music. He, because he knew, hey, the 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 God or the, the power that Daniel served was the true God. Because think about it early, he saw um he saw him deliver uh, Ananias, Sapphira, and uh, Mishael from the uh, from the, uh, the the furnace. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the, the Babylonian names that were given unto them. <clears throat> All right. Uh, but, verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God. You see that? Servant of the living power. Is thy power, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My power hath sent his angel, and have shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, hath I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him, and because he he actually favored Daniel, he did. Then was the king exceeding glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no matter of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his power. And the king commanded they brought those men which had accused Daniel to cast them into the den of lions them, their children, and their wives. So by them messing up and accusing Daniel and uh, lying on them, they, they whole household got messed up. The wives and the children. And the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces. Or ever they came at the bottom of the den. See that? <clears throat> Daniel was found without fault and we want to be found without fault you know, uh, you know, we, you know, of course, you know, we sin, you know, on a daily basis, but, you know, we want to be found with no gal. So, so at the same time, you know, we, we're covered. So we, you know, we want to continue to follow Yahweh Hashem Yahushai and his ways and through these scriptures and through this word. Okay. So let me get, uh, get some here. All right. This is uh, the account of, out of Baal and the Dragon, out of the Apocrypha. Uh, this is, I'm going to start at verse 22. And it says, Therefore the king slew them and delivered Baal into Daniel's power, who destroyed him and his temple. And in that same place there was a great dragon which they, which they of Babylon worshipped. And the king said unto Daniel, Will thou also say that this is of brass, lo, he liveth? He eateth, he drinketh, thou canst not say he is no living God. He is no living power. Therefore worship him. Then said Daniel unto the king, I will worship Yahweh my power. For he is the living God. He is the living power. But give me leave, O king, and I shall slay this, this dragon without sword or staff. The king said, I give thee leave. And Daniel took pitch fat and fat and hair and deceived them together and made lumps thereof this he put in the dragon's mouth and so the dragon burst in sunder and Daniel said lo these are the gods ye worship so now he making fun of them <laughs> you see how easy he took them out uh, when they of Babylon heard that they took great indignation and conspired against the king saying the king is become a Jew you see that <laughs> 
and he hath destroyed Baal. He hath slain the dragon and put the priest to death. So they they accuse the king of basically <laughs> um, uh, choosing a way, to, you know, choosing uh, Yahweh Shemesh over their idol gods, the living God. You know, uh, so they came to the king. So they came to the king and said, deliver us, Daniel, or else we will destroy thee and thine house. So they they they, they pressed upon the king and said, hey, bring him to us or we're going to kill you and everybody in your house. All right. Now, when the king saw that they pressed him sore, being constrained, he delivered Daniel unto them, who cast him into the lion's den where he was six days. And in the den, there were seven lions and they had given, and they had given them every two, so like every day, two carcasses and two sheep, which then were not given to them, to the intent that they might devour them. So they starved. They not only uh, put them in the den, but they starved the uh, the lions too. So you know, so that they they, they when they see when they put their eyes on him, that they will want to devour them. Uh, verse thirty three. <clears throat> Now there was in Jewry a prophet called Habakkuk, who had made pottage and had broken bread in a bowl, and was going into the field for to bring it to the reapers. But the angel of the Lord said unto Habakkuk, Go carry that dinner, but thou hast into so like that thou hast into Babylon unto Daniel, who is in the lion's den. So the angel came. And, and told him, hey, get that, get, basically go take that food to Daniel. He's in the lion's den in Babylon. And Habakkuk said, Lord, I never saw Babylon, neither do I know where the den is. Then the angel of the Lord took him by the crown and bare him by, his, by the hair of his head and through the vehemency of his spirit set him in Babylon over the den. You see that? And Habakkuk cried, saying, O Daniel, Daniel, take the dinner which, which the most I have sent thee. And Daniel said, Thou hast remembered me, O power. Neither hast thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee. You see that? Daniel said he, he remembered him. He, uh, he understood that the most I remembered him because he stayed faithful and he was not forsaken. And that's why I'm bringing this out because in these times coming up, you, you may have to, you, you never know, you may have to go you know, some, some time without food, but don't, don't be, you know, don't fret, don't be scared, because the most I can do anything, he can send rape, he can send birds, you know, to deliver you food, some, some random person to deliver you food, the angel, like, he, he took Habakkuk up by his head and just placed him in front of Daniel and brought him food to eat, it's like, you gotta understand who's in control, y'all about him out shy is in control, so trust in him, never leave him, never forsake him, uh, stand firm and be rooted on this word because I promise you it'll take you where you need to go it'll take you on to through that straight gate uh, verse uh, 39 so Daniel arose and did eat and the angel of the Lord set Habakkuk in his own place again immediately so he literally had so if you think about it he literally had Habakkuk make that food just to give it to Daniel he didn't know that at the time, but that's literally what happened. Okay. Upon the seventh day, the king went to bewail Daniel. And when he came to the den, he looked in and behold, Daniel was sitting. Then cried the king with a loud voice saying, Great art thou, great art the Lord, power of Daniel, and there is none other beside thee. And he drew him out and cast those that were the cause of his destruction into the den, and they were devoured in a moment before his face. So the angel literally came, set Habakkuk in the den, <laughs> you know, to give him to give him some food. So Dan was in the, in the den chilling. All right, Dan was literally in the den chilling. I want to get this here. Let's see, this is Hebrews chapter eleven. I'm gonna start at verse one. 
It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, uh, Daniel didn't know how he was going to be delivered out of that out of that den, out of the uh, hands of the lions, but he had faith. He hoped for it, although yet he didn't see it. Okay? Check this out, verse 2. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. That's how Daniel obtained a good report, is through his faith. See that? I'm going to skip on down to verse 32. It says, And what shall I say more? For the time which failed me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. Verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, and stopped the mouths of lions. Daniel was able to stop the mouths of lions. Or, you know, the angels stopped the mouths of lions for him. How? Oh, so like it. Through faith. That's how he was able to do that. Okay, and I got one more I want to get. Uh, let's see, it's gonna be first Maccabees. It's first get Maccabees chapter two verse fifty one. So when we in these situations or in these hard times going through Jacob's trouble, think about this: first Maccabees two fifty one. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. See that? Call to remembrance. That's why we constantly read these scriptures. We, you know, we look at what our fathers did. You know, because that, those are faith boosters. Those are their, uh, like the scriptures say, uh, the, all things that are written aforetime time were written for our learning. You know, this is for our learning. We're supposed to take this in. Okay, this is for our beneficial. Uh, verse 60. Daniel, for his innocency, it's like innocency, innocency was delivered from the mouth of lions. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. See that? See that? None that put your trust in them shall be overcome. All right. So, hope you're edified on this little, you know, quick little lesson here. Just going into uh, the faith of Daniel. Matter of fact, I'm about to title a call to remembrance the faith of Daniel. All right. Uh, but I uh, hope you're edified. So, shalom. <laughs>